So this is not going to be Kimberly Morgan on YouTube. It's going to be Jade O'Reilly with the voice of Kimberly Morgan. <laughs> Sorry, everyone's first in their book, but I don't have a book. So, okay, here it is. Whenever it comes time to do a pastiche, Kimberly always picks Sharon Olds, who is a wonderful poet, if you know Sharon Olds. And that's Kimberly's very favorite poet. So anytime she wants to pastiche, she pastiches Sharon Olds. So her pastiche is a pastiche of Sharon Olds called This, and Kimberly's poem is called This as well. Maybe if I did not have this, I would have to live in a cave or identify my soul with one snow-capped mountain that kept me from despair. I would call myself environmentalist, yogi, Buddhist. I would wear the plaid at all times, the radical green, the bear's blood red, uniform of the self-exile, social misfit. If I did not have this. Or I would protect myself with spiritual armor, clan in the circle, righteous seclusion with magic spells. Or the disdain of my father here in my nervous fingers. Or the anxiety of my mother running through my labored speech like a current in a great ocean. But I have this. So this is what I am. This body, pink, freckled as a bruised peach, pressed to his body. I am these breasts that flatten against him like jelly oozing between two slices of bread. And the nipples, inverted, ducking their heads until coaxed from hiding. They are my life. The copper sex that takes him in a greedy worshiper at the altar of the gods. Don't ask me about my country or my children's names or even what I do. If you want to know who I am, I am this, this. Kimberly has two small children, and so her obeds, whenever she wakes up, they're dedicated to her children. Here's the first obeyed. It's called Two Worlds, One Morning. My world wakes with the radio alarm. For the next 90 minutes, I heard sheep. Check off tasks from a to-do list. Every breath a mediation, focusing shepherdess and flock. Manifesting the goal, get to school on time. My son wakes with the sun, strips off his pirate pajamas, curls into a ball for warmth. His nude bottom points skyward, a peach-colored rocket ready for liftoff to a world where 20-inch creatures roll out of red and white balls ready for a fight. As my clock counts down, the tasks mount, put on white socks, dragon tennis shoes, brush teeth with vanilla cherry toothpaste. As he drifts through my world, I capture him, wrestle him into clothing. He's ready for me, armed with a sword forged from plastic race car tracks. Just before I am able to slay the tooth decay, he decapitates me. Headless, but not without strength. I grab him and roll on the floor, worlds battling, leaving the list incomplete. At school, we smile as he receives a tardy slip, my world eclipsed by the five-year-olds. And speaking of the sun-drenched L.A. Here is a Terza Rima called Santa Ana Winds. Devils whip up October's wind, blend desert heat with hell's vitriol, blast the city of angels, 
much to God's chagrin. Urban fire starters heed the call. Chaparral longs to burn. One tiny spark ignites a fireball. Autumn is the season for which firefighters yearn. Manzanita's red bark lit with orange flame is a lovely tableau. Only the homeowner is taciturn. Santa Ana winds dance with our hero's adagio. Helicopters and television reporters join the revelry. Burning homes are quid pro quo. Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs>